when you see MJ just laughing at <laughs> Gary Payton, that's Gary <laughs> Payton he's talking about. What do you think? Well, I mean, it's factual for MJ. And the, the story actually gives context to that, Greeny, because MJ was psychologically going through something with Father's Day and his father not being there. And, you know, look, this is who Michael Jordan is. Psychologically, if he is ingratiated in the game, he doesn't feel like anybody. And there's no one on the planet that can take away the kind of attention to detail that he will have in those moments. And Gary Payton, as great of a, as a defensive player as he is, he is nowhere close to the level that Michael Jordan is, and Michael Jordan recognizes that, and this is who Michael Jordan is. This is why you love Michael Jordan. He is a great white shark, Rini. He, and there's nobody on the planet that can compete with Michael, and he showed you right there that he still thinks with that same mentality. Yo, do, do you think there's anyone, like, I believe he always respected Joe Dumars' defense on him. I think Dumars gave him as much trouble as anyone. Is there, is, is there any part of you that would want to hear Jordan give a little more respect to a player of the stature of Gary Payton all these years later, because if you listen to the sound, and we only have permission to show you certain pieces of this, Gary Payton isn't necessarily being disrespectful of Jordan in the episode, at least not what I would consider disrespectful. It seems Jay Will Jordan saw it differently. Well, Jordan did see it differently, and so does Gary Payton. So, look, I, I played against Gary Payton for USA Basketball when I was younger. This the same guy that was talking trash to me when I was 18, 19 years old, calling me every name in the book, and literally put his foot on my throat and tried to keep my, my body down on the ground and didn't let me back up. So, you're talking about two, you know, a crazy competitive individuals who both want to, you know, impart their will on the other. And MJ, at the end, is going to have the upper hand because he is Michael Jordan. And Gary Payton, for as gifted as he was athletically, uh, Greeny, with being defensively great, like athletically still he wasn't on the same pedestal as Michael Jordan. And GP recognizes that. That's why GP tried to lure you into trash talking. That was his superhero power that he tried to get Jordan lost in. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what GP could do. He could do anything he wants. Jordan knew what level he was on, and that level was drastically different than Gary Payton. For those of you who didn't see it last night or perhaps don't remember the details of that series, the Bulls went up three games to none. So the series was essentially <laughs> over. And then Payton says he changed his defensive philosophy and was much more physical with Jordan. As a general rule, that does seem to be the thread of commonality amongst all the most effective defenders of Michael Jordan was, I guess, to get as physical as you can, Jay. Well, I don't know, not that anyone ever shut him down, but that does appear to have been the best way to slow him down to at least some degree. But, Green, like, you know, even watching Gary Payton last night talk about, you know, he was a difference maker, and if they had done that earlier, you know, it, I think you saw the real reaction of who Michael Jordan is, and this is the same guy. Let me remind people this that would watch people during the USA basketball stuff, not USA basketball stuff, I'm sorry, when he was filming um, Space Jam, he would invite players to the arena and watch them and take notes and have fictitious conversations with himself of players talking trash to him so he can find ways to motivate himself. So when you saw that last night, like that's the same MJ even at today's stage that was like, okay, Gary, I will play you right now and still give you 40 because that's the trigger. That's the thing that always had him go to another place psychologically. He had to find a way to motivate himself and GP did that once again last evening when he watched it. And that laugh for Michael Jordan is, is just remarkable. It, it was an incredible night of TV last night. There was one other thing I wanted to get a thought from you on, and we're going to circle back to Michael in a couple of minutes, Jay. But Scottie Pippen talked about the 1.8 seconds. And let me set that up for those of you who are watching this morning who don't know necessarily what that was. But this was the 94 series against the Knicks. This is the year Jordan wasn't there. Jordan was playing baseball. Scottie Pippen had an MVP caliber season that year. They were down two games to none. They were playing at home on a Friday night. And with 1.8 seconds left in the game, Phil Jackson called a play that Tony Kukoc would get the last shot, and Scottie Pippen refused to go into the game. Now, all these years later, Scottie Pippen, who has talked very little about that over the years, said that if it was he, – he, he acknowledged that it was wrong, but he said that if it happened again, the circumstances happened again, he would probably treat it the same way. What did you think of that, Jay? Was Scottie Pippen wrong? Yes, he was, Greeny. But the best players on teams change plays all the time. I mean, I, we, we've heard LeBron James be on a podium talking about, I changed the play. 
I decided to do it this way, and he won the game. I've heard Kobe Bryant talk about that. I was actually on my Bulls team with Jalen Rose, where Bill Cartwright, the head coach, drew up a play for E-Rob or me to take a shot, and Jay Rose sat there and said, no, you're not gonna run that play, you're gonna run this play for me. And I watched Bill Cartwright then change the play to Jalen Rose taking the shot. So guys do this all the time. Is it the right reaction that you want from a teammate? No, but at the same time, like guys have egos and Scottie Pippen believed that he was the best player that deserved to have that moment for himself. So was it right? No, but we see guys do it all the time. I was in the arena that night covering that game in that entire series. And I'll, I'll tell you a couple of very quick things about it in which I believe Scottie Pippen has been very fortunate. One, Tony Kukoc throws in a very tough shot to win the game. Mm. If he doesn't and the Bulls lose in overtime, they're going to get swept in that series, and history would have remembered it completely differently. Secondly, that game was played on a Friday night. Late on a Friday night, game four was an early game on Sunday, so there was very little turnaround time. The conversation lasted a very short time. And then maybe most importantly, game five of that series featured a candidly a terrible call that went against the Bulls that most people in yep, Chicago remember, remember as deciding the series. That's remembered forever as the <laughs> Hugh Hollins game. And that is probably the reason the Bulls wind up losing. And most people, I think, have forgotten that moment from Scotty. I think those three things could have changed the way we remember that forever. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.